tool that you use to pull a key is called Keylight. And Keylight's made by this company, The Foundry, as I mentioned earlier. And you can go find Keylight over here on its own. If I just type in key you know, in the effects panel, effects and presets panel, you'll see down here this Keylight. Keylight 1.2 is the current version. And you can go grab that and apply it to the clip. But ultimately, you're going to work with two other effects when you are doing keying. You're going to work with the key cleaner and the advanced spill suppressor. So, since basically folks at After Effects or folks at Adobe know, you're going to use them sooner or later if you're going to follow kind of a, a good workflow when you're working with color correction, they have created a preset. How nice. And the preset's over here under Animation Presets, Image Utilities, and there's the preset. And you can't even read the whole title because it's so long. It lists all three effects. Key Light, Key Cleaner, Advanced Spill Suppressor. So, use that instead. You don't need to use Keylight by itself. Use this guy instead because it just saves you a couple steps. And also does a kind of a neat little thing. I'll show you that in a second. So I'll double click on that to apply it to this clip. Notice that all three of them are over here. Notice that Advanced Spill Suppressor is turned off by default because you save that for later. I think the Key Cleaner should be turned off as well. So I'm going to click away to deselect. So if I turn them off, it'll turn off that one as well. So I'll click away to deselect, turn off the Key Cleaner, close them down for the time being so you don't have to all this room taken up. And we'll work with the key light here on its own. There was something else I wanted to say. Oh, yeah. Under Advanced uh, Spill Suppressor here, uh, there's two methods. There's Standard and Ultra. If you choose Ultra, then you can pick a key color. And the thing is, you want to pick the key color that you use here when you select the key over here. And rather than manual do that, it'll automatically take whatever color you've picked here and put it down here when you use this preset. Kind of clever. So that's the other advantage of using a key of this preset rather than doing them one at a time. So use the preset. Okay, so here's Keylight. And Keylight, uh, at, you know, at first glance has got a ton of options, particularly when you start opening these things up and you go, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to figure out this complex thing? And the answer is don't worry about it. Don't figure it out because most of these things um, create more problems than they solve. And the folks at the Foundry may wince when they hear me say that, but basically you use this as a, a basic way to do a, a really good key. This is an excellent uh, effect to do keying and, uh, um, and, uh, and I'm watching, looking at a question over here. I'll get to the question in a second. It's an excellent keying system, but you could take the simplified approach and then use the key cleaner and the advanced spill suppressor to take care of that. Now Sealer is asking me, can I show how to import the preset into After Effects. The preset is built in. Sealard uh, asked whether uh, we need to import this preset. It's built in to the current version of After Effects. I'm not sure when they built it, started building it in. Probably started building it in when they put the advanced spill suppressor into After Effects, which I think they did with the CC version. So you should have this animation preset in there already. So no need to import it. Although you could create it very easily, but nevertheless, um, there it is. Okay, hope that answers your question, Sealard. Good. Okay, so, um, where was I? Oh yeah, so, now, uh, so we're going to take the simple approach, and I'll explain some of the things along the way here as to why we want to do that. Okay, so the first order of business is to pick the green color, and selecting the right color when you do keying is, is important. You want to get the right color to simplify the workflow later. So if you just kind of decide I'm going to go pick a color kind of near this person, uh, then that may be good enough, but you can check your work as you select the color. So the way you do that is you go over to the view here and you go to the drop down list and change it to status. And don't worry about the fact that it's white. We'll deal with that in a second. Remember I turned off render over here. And then you go get the eyedropper tool to select the color. And you can select the color from anywhere in the entire scene here. But we're going to select it obviously from this image over here. And now nothing is happening over here, right? But if I hold down the alt or the option key, now, ah, things happen. And we're looking at the status view. The status view is an exaggerated view of how well you're selecting uh, or how well the key is working. Black means that that will be transparent, which we want. We want the green screen to be transparent. White means that area will be opaque. That's the foreground. We want it to be opaque. And gray means that there's some level of transparency there, which could be just minutely transparent or it could be extremely transparent. They don't give you the choice. It's just somewhat transparent on a huge range. So now you take your, your eyedropper tool with the, with the alt or the option key held down and move around until you get a really good key. Look, see how that works there? 
I'm going right over here, and it looks like right about there is the best key, because we got a lot of black, a fair amount of white, so I click there, and that now is our key. I that's the color we selected. And just as a quick follow-up, if you take a look at the advanced suppressor, you notice that color matches that color. So it automatically did the work of matching those two colors, just as a little aside there. Okay, so now we've selected the color, and we're looking at the results here. Oh, I knew I wanted to do one more thing. Um, sorry about this. Uh, the first step that you do when you're working with... I'm going to get rid of this guy now. We're, we're safe. We, we finished our work with him. He did his job. I'm going to close down the layer panel. I forgot to mention, the first thing you do is to get rid of the junk around the outside here. So I'm going to change the status... I'm going to change from status view to intermediate result, so you can see it better now. And we're seeing purple because that's the background, right? And now I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this crud by using a garbage mat, it's called. And sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier. With the layer selected, we just uh, go get the pen tool. And the reason you, layer, you select the layer is if you don't select the layer and get the pen tool, you'll make a shape. So we don't want to do that. So you make the layer active, get the pen tool, and start just drawing here. To click, click, click around the outside to then just protect this area and get rid of the crud. And you want to check and see how far my hands move out. Determine how big the mask can be. And notice that I hardly reach out at all, which was a purposeful thing. And so I can make a mask relatively close to me, like this. And the purpose of the game is to try to have as little of the green screen, as well as all the crud here, uh, necessary to be cleaned up. You want to have as little here to worry about, because the less you have to worry about here, the easier it is to get your key. So, should have mentioned the masking right off the bat. That's the first thing you do. But you can see that doing it out of order is not going to hurt. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my uh, status. Now, then notice there are a lot of different views here. Basically, uh, none of which are of any value except for status and intermediate result. Now, the, now this, and this then brings up the point of why we're not using all the rest of this cool stuff down here. We're going to use some of the cool stuff, but not anywhere near all of it. If you choose what's called final result, then that sort of expects you then to use all the stuff including the inside mask, outside mask, foreground color correction, edge color correction, source crops, all these things down here that are pretty complex and are kind of like pushing and pulling. You, know, you push one way, then you got to pull another way, and then you got to adjust this and adjust this. So you're constantly kind of tweaking it back and forth to get, the best, to get the best mask. And that is hard, and it's a lot of manual labor, and it's a lot of uh, guessing. So rather than have the final result be your choice here, use what's called the intermediate result, and you'll get better results. I'm here to tell you, it's weird, but that's how it works. So, you, so when you are working with key lights, let it be the intermediate result and not the final result. And when you're checking your work, status is the best way to check your work. Status is an exaggerated view of how well your mask is, how well your mat is being created. This is a mat, the, the part that's inside the, the white area, that's the mat. If you choose a different view here, like screen mat, it's a lot uh, more forgiving. You'll notice that it looks like I did a perfect job there with a little bit of uh, gray showing there and the black all around is perfect, right? But in fact, if I take a look at the status, that gives me a truer look at how well my green screen is working, which by the way is working pretty darn well. You hardly ever get a clean mat like this. Okay, just by selecting a color. All right, so that's the thing. We're not using the final result that's just way too difficult to accomplish your task. Stick with intermediate result for when, when you work with key light and use status as your way to check your work most of the time. Feel free to use the screen mat once in a while to kind of check your edges and check the hair and things like that. That's also fine when you're working on it. So we'll go back to status. So now that we've done this we need to fix things up. We want to get rid of that gray in the black. We want to get rid of the gray in the white. We want this to be all white. We want this to be all black. And the way you do that is by what's called screen, working on the screen mat. This is the screen color, which is the green, and now the screen mat's down here. You work on the mat. Now, in between here, what are these guys? This is screen balance, screen gain, de-spill bias, and alpha bias. Screen color is basically saying, okay, you pick green, but you can expand the chroma a bit to take in more green, which is one way of fixing a green screen but it leads to problems when you take a look at the view later. 
So I suggest you don't use screen gain. Screen gain. It's one of the things that works with this final result thing. And then the screen balance then looks at the, the color and, and then tries to relate the color green versus red and blue. And, but it sets to default at 50% whenever you use green. It sets to default at 95 when you use blue. That's just the way the colors work. And so there's no real reason to mess with this because it sets to the right value by default depending on whether it's green or blue. If I had a blue screen here and picked a blue color there, that would set, change to 95. So you don't mess with that. The de-spill bias is that spill I was talking about. And key light does a really good thing. Key light, when, when you select the color, it makes that color transparent. And then it looks for that color on the mat, on the edges of the mat. And when it sees that color, that color green, it converts that color to the default color here of gray. So any place there would be like a green halo around you, along your skin or your edges of your body or whatever, it converts that to gray, which is a good thing. It's just, it makes it so it's not obvious. It's not necessarily the right color, but it's good enough. It's just a soft edge. And that's a good thing. That, that's the default behavior. You can select a color, let's say go to the skin and pick the skin instead and have the edge not be gray, but be the color of the skin. But that also works to this little final result thing here. And we're going to use the, uh, the advanced spill suppressor to deal with the spill issues anyways. So we're accepting the gray default and we'll deal with the advanced spill thing later. So that's how that, that's what those guys are all about. And you don't have to use them. All right, so now the two big guys that you work with here are clip black and clip white. What you want to do is you want to tell the, the key that any place that it sees a little bit of gray here in the black, you know, anything, basically, it's, basically what, what it's seeing there really is very dark black, but not absolute black. You want to say anything that's really close to black, make it black. And that's called the clip black mode. And I can open it up, it's just a slider. And as I go from zero and go forward a little ways, I want that gray to go away. And notice the gray's going away there, just by going a little bit forward. And that's plenty. So I went forward to 4.8, just based on this particular image here. All right. So that's, that's the way you get rid of the little bits of dark, dark, black, but they're not really black. They're just dark, very dark gray. And now they're black. So you're basically expanding the black. It's kind of like how color correction works in some ways. And now you want to talk about clipping the white. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to take anything that's just a light gray, almost white, and make it white. So to do that, I just start clipping the white by dragging this to the left. And you see that, okay, we're getting that pretty well figured out. All right. And that, I think, is purposely viewed because my arm is kicked out. Now, I want to go look at my hair. So I do Control plus a couple of times to zoom in, space bar to move around. And I want to maintain a little bit of a gray area there because that's okay. That's a, that's a somewhat transparent, somewhat opaque area. And you want it to be that way because that's kind of the soft edge around the hair. So I think this is going to be fine. So now we change over to the intermediate result, and that shows me against the purple background. And if you look around there, that's reasonably good, but it's maybe the hair is a little too helmety, right? You can try to deal with that a little bit by adjusting the amount of clip white. Maybe make it a little bit less intense. But I think that's pretty close. If you look down there, you see a wisp of hair down there. I must have had my hair well combed that day. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'll do shift forward slash to take a full screen view. All right, let's just zoom in on my shirt for a second here. I'll show you something. Now, if I change to the uh, final result, I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but I'm guessing that it'll turn splotchy. And I, you see those splotches that showed up there, a little splotch up here, little splotches there. And notice the way the edges changed. Yeah, this is the thing about the final result. Notice it's now a soft edge and final result. It's a harder edge. A little hard, it has a kind of a halo around it. So save yourself a lot of trouble and use the uh, intermediate result. All right, now I'm going to take a look at a couple more things that are not necessarily things I need to do right now, but there are two more things that you can do here. You can have what's called a screen softness and screen shrink and grow. Now, normally you, you, you would not use these things because you don't want to mess up your, uh, your, your edge too much, but sometimes if the edge needs to be just softened up a little bit, you can soften it here just maybe to about, you know, one or two, something like that. And when you soften it, you need to kind of shrink it down a little bit. Uh, slightly. 
So that's kind of a way to also fine-tune the edges a little bit. So those are the other features that I would suggest you, do, you work with. Now, the two more things down here called, it looks like they're, they're spelled despot, right? He's a despot, but in fact it means D-spot. And if you were to uh, go back to the status, you might see little spots here, right? And you can use the D-spot black and white to deal with them, but I found that the D-spot thing creates more problems than it's worth, so I don't use the D-spot thing. And I think we've got a pretty good mat here anyways. Okay, so that is the intermediate result, and I think we'll, we'll call that one done for now. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Jeff Sangstack, an Adobe Certified Expert and the Lead Instructor here at BlueEffects.net. If you want to watch this entire video lesson, as well as other live classes and After Effects crash courses, then I invite you to check out the Blue Effects After Effects Academy. Just click the link below this video to find out what we've prepared for you in the After Effects Academy.